The UW-Madison Division of Diversity, Equity, and Educational Achievement houses some of the most successful and innovative scholarship and service programs in the nation. By creating a village of common goals within a top research Division I public university, our students are nurtured in their pursuit of excellence in dozens of academic disciplines. Class of 2021, we're so proud of you. You defined the word resiliency by the way you handled challenges. You persevered, continuing on with your studies in a once in a century pandemic. Not forgetting to vote or tend to your academic careers, you did it masked up. Testing, social distancing, and your badger app. Your class is a cohort of scholars who became campus leaders and will be future global leaders pursuing excellence in studies across every school and college from pre-law to pre-med and finances to engineering while earning degrees with as many as three majors and multiple certifications. The class of 2021 was also part of important student organizations and participated in community volunteerism, sports, and study abroad programs. You did this all while affirming your personal value through conscious activism. You're ready for what's next. You and your plan exemplify the Wisconsin idea. And remember, we've been part of the best college traditions. Our scholars have had a full Badger experience with friendship bonds forged in positive memories of growth and achievement. And above all, you've earned personal pride in being alumni of the University of Wisconsin. Be proud. Congratulations to the class of 2021 on Wisconsin. DDEA scholars, I am so very proud of you. Class of 2021. Let's pause and breathe in this pivotal moment in your lives with your classmates, your families, and those who've supported you in this journey. We all recognize how extremely hard you worked to earn your degree, and you deserve to be celebrated for that major accomplishment and so much more. You've pushed through circumstances no other generation has had to survive. You showed us how to not only persevere and produce, but also finish with excellence. I stand in awe of the national awards, grad school fellowships, and career opportunities our graduates have earned. Our program families have been together for years and nothing can break the bonds that were forged in struggle and joy. Likewise, our DDEA village has been an additional family with the larger community, offering opportunities to meet and expand circles of support and presence, making your college experience broader, deeper, and filled with positive memories. Typically, I would encourage our graduates to be brave and resilient, but your cohort has taught us far more about resilience and determination than anyone could imagine. I have faith in your future lives, careers, and contributions. They will be just as outstanding, if not better, than what you've shown us during your undergraduate years. Wherever you go next into the world, you have our full support and best wishes. After holding you close for years, we now send you into a world that desperately needs your talents, intelligence, and passion. Take pride in your family's long journey and take care of yourself in every way, health, mind, and spirit. Also, Please keep in touch. We look forward to seeing you in person again. Now we have inspirational words to launch our graduates into the next chapter of their lives from a seasoned traveler on this journey. She's a trailblazer, a role model, and someone who works very hard for her success. Most importantly, she is a UW-Madison alumna who has been where you are today and has insight on what's ahead. I want to thank her in advance for her sincere desire to share a message of encouragement. Judge Kashua Christy Yang is a circuit court judge in Milwaukee County. She was elected to the bench on April 4, 
2017, becoming the first Asian American judge to be elected in Wisconsin without appointment, and the first elected judge of Hmong ethnicity in the United States. Prior to ascending to the bench, Judge Yang was a private practice attorney representing individuals in family law, workers' compensation, and social security disability matters. Before her assignment to Children's Court, she was in criminal misdemeanor court. Additionally, Judge Yang has spent significant time on various pro bono and community efforts, such as the Volunteer Legal Clinic and the Legal Options for Trafficked and Underserved Survivors. She is a mother of three beautiful daughters. Judge Yang is the third oldest of 11 children and one of nine daughters. Christy Yang received her law degree from the University of Wisconsin in 2009. Let's give a warm DDEA virtual welcome to Judge Christy Yang. I am delighted to join all of you on this joyous occasion. Before I continue with my remarks, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the support that all of our graduates today have received from their parents, family members, and loved ones whose contributions have made this day possible. Like many of you, all of my successes were made possible because of my parents' hard work and sacrifice, including the sacrifice of family members and my late husband. As President John F. Kennedy once said, for of those whom much is given, much is required. And so graduates, I congratulate all of you and your loved ones on your achievement. When I reflect on the milestones of my life, I realize that oftentimes I go off the path of least resistance. As my sisters have often said, I like to do things the hard way. I would prefer to describe my way as my creative way. I have been very blessed in that through creativity, I've been able to achieve things that I, at one time, didn't even think of. The most potent transformative tool at our disposal is creativity. Through creativity, we are able to change minds and change the world. To be creative is to create something that has never existed before. Creativity doesn't have to be the defiant child, boundary-pushing artist, or mad scientist. Although these are often the poster children of creativity, I dare say that innately all human beings are creative. Being creative does not necessarily mean to create a novelty. Rather, it can be something new from what exists. As the old adage goes, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. Now, literally speaking, the wheel works. <laughs> How do we make it better? How many different applications can we use the wheel to improve our lives? Think of Michelin's newly designed tires that will never go flat, or Bridgestone's airless tire. All aspects of creativity require some degree of critical thinking. Creativity can be a radical or unconventional approach. It can be redefining boundaries and so forth. Creativity can even be the process to help us understand the world around us. And I can attest to the creativity that was necessary for me to understand the world around me when I immigrated to the United States, to surviving high school, college, law school, and life struggles, and to thriving in life. And in my campaign for circuit court judge, I can tell you my campaign wasn't anything extraordinary. The creativity was in the process. I did things differently by building upon strategies used by prior campaigns. This was nothing new, but it was something different. I spent many sleepless nights studying prior campaigns. I was building upon existing information to materialize my goal. I wanted to take a new approach to how I tell my story. My life and legal experiences were different from what we have seen from judicial candidates. This was our campaign message. It was a different message, a new message, one that asked of voters, how does the judicial system reflect society today? Moreover, the way in which I decided to campaign was different from how most judicial candidates campaign. Based upon studies, creativity challenges the brain to defy convention. It challenges boundaries, and invokes critical thinking. Take, for example, what has happened to access and administration of justice because of the pandemic. In 1981, the People's Court was the first televised court show. A televised court show was and is simply for entertainment. Before the pandemic, very few people would have thought of broadcasting real court hearings. Because of the pandemic, for the first time, 
all courts across the nation had to resort to the use of available technology to ensure access and administration of justice. In a very short time, I went from only hearing cases in person to conducting virtual court hearings. Almost overnight, the switch was flipped, and here I am today giving my speech virtually. Never in my life would I have thought that it would become acceptable to conduct hearings in this way. The pandemic required that we all defy convention to ensure access to and the administration of justice. The technology and capacity to conduct virtual hearings were always there, but the idea of virtual hearing was unconventional. Now you can go to YouTube or a state court website and watch court hearings be live streamed. This was something that before the pandemic, only court TV afforded us. Suddenly judges had their own YouTube channels. And the very definition of court decorum was changing along with the use of technology. Never before had public access to the courts been at the public's fingertips, literally. Even so, what does public access even mean? Is access only for those who have the resources, such as a phone or a computer? The pandemic has presented a unique circumstance that invites creativity. During these times, everyone is uncomfortable. We live in a continuous state of change. Everything is fluid. Therefore, change through creativity is tolerable. But what happens when we become comfortable? Now that the core system is forced to defy convention, will we dare go back or do we move forward? When we take a creative approach to solving a problem, more questions than answers tend to surface. Creativity teaches us there should be more than one way to solve a problem. As the core system works through the pandemic, additional creativity is required to address equality and equity. Take, for example, the challenge that some families face due to the lack of or limited Wi-Fi connection. It is not illogical to think that a student will fall behind in school. A student who was struggling before the pandemic, who has unreliable Wi-Fi connection during the pandemic, and can only do virtual learning. Now, if we extend that child's circumstance to virtual court hearings, how can the court ensure access to justice while maintaining integrity in due process, including upholding the court's orders? We're living in a time when your creativity to solve the many challenges our society faces is more than just helpful, it is critical. It is critical to our livelihood and to our democracy. Where do we start and how do we address social injustice? How do we define fair representation at all levels of government? What is an agreeable distribution of resources? Who should decide that and how should that be decided? These are just some of the many challenges our society faces challenges that require your creativity. Now, at this point, I would wish you good luck, but you don't need luck. You just need to allow your creativity to change your world and this world. If you have made it this far, you will go even farther if you allow your creativity to come alive. Be bold, but considerate. Take risks, but be receptive. Don't give up on your dreams. Instead, refine your approach. It doesn't have to be something novel, just something new. And being new doesn't mean that it cannot be founded on what exists. Being different can also be something new. Your ideas and your education are tools that will empower you to do more than before. These are the tools that will enable you to materialize your creativity. This is because you can take new information and combine it with what you already know to come up with something new, to address issues that we are facing. Creativity is being able to visualize something that doesn't exist yet. We all have the power of creativity. So allow yourself to visualize and utilize the tools you have been given. Thank you. Hello to our DDEEA graduates, families, and friends. I'm Dr. Anji Reed Singhani, Assistant Vice Provost for Strategic Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Administration. It's my honor to be with you today. Congratulations to our Class of 2021 graduates and your families. Every year we send off our seniors and super seniors, but they remain part of our extended DDEA family. We will miss the opportunity to mentor, advise, and work with you. But there is great joy in seeing who you've become and imagining what lies ahead. And of course, like all family members, we hope you'll stay in touch and visit with us on occasion. As we celebrate your academic success, I wanna take a moment to honor the memory of a special patron, diversity advocate, and friend of the division and of Badgers everywhere. Wade Fetzer, who passed away in August 2020. 
As those of us at DDEA well know, diversity and inclusion work benefits everyone. Such work is rooted in broad participation by sincere and compassionate people advocating for a better world. Wade Fetzer was one of those people. He not only celebrated academic and athletic success, he helped to ensure it by supporting generations of fellow Badgers. Wade Fetzer III earned a bachelor's degree in economics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1959, followed by an MBA at Northwestern University. He began his career in management consulting. In 1971, he joined Goldman Sachs and Company, where he became managing partner of the Chicago office in 1986. In the business world, Mr. Fetzer modeled leadership and integrity in mentoring countless people who became dear friends and colleagues. His impact on their lives and careers is immeasurable, continuing well past his retirement in 2005. As a board member of the Posse Foundation's Collegiate Scholarship and Leadership Development Organization, Mr. Fetzer worked to connect his alma mater to Posse's talent pipeline. He spearheaded efforts to make UW-Madison the first public institution to partner with Posse to recruit graduating high school cohorts. With 170 Posse scholars, UW is now the largest partner institution and the only one recruiting from four cities, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, and Washington, D.C. We're so grateful to Mr. Fetzer and his beloved wife of 61 years, Beverly, a fellow Badger, for their leadership and dedication to the program over many years and for their practical support, such as gifts of laptops and printers to recognize scholars' academic performance. On a personal level, the Fetzers made time to attend award ceremonies and graduations, getting to know the Posse scholars and affirming their connections to one another and to UW-Madison. In addition to being instrumental in bringing the Posse program to UW-Madison, Mr. and Mrs. Fetzer created the Fetzer Academic Center to benefit student athletes and provided the lead gift for the Martin and Florence Below Alumni Center. He served on the board of visitors for the School of Business and as past chairman and member of the UW Foundation Board. In 2010, UW-Madison presented him with an honorary doctor of humane letters. DDEEA, along with the entire UW-Madison community, mourns Mr. Fetzer's passing and thanks him, Beverly and their entire family for their enduring devotion to Badger Nation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Eric Williams, Interim Assistant Vice Provost for Student Diversity and Scholarship Programs. Hello graduates, families, and the DDEEA campus and community partners. I'm Eric Williams, also known as Dr. E, and I serve as the Interim Assistant Vice Provost for Student Diversity and Scholarship Programs. First and foremost, congratulations to the class of 2021. It's always a joy to share these moments when we can celebrate reaching a goal, making it through in the victory of achievement. This spring, we're celebrating close to 350 graduates who've been forged in the fire of resilience. Our students are smart, talented, determined, and ready for whatever lies ahead. Before we go through our tradition of hearing from graduate speakers representing the distinct sectors of our divisional family, I want to speak directly to our students. DDEEA graduates, you are the incredible result of a shared goal that has been pursued since you first entered our college access, support, and scholarship programs. Because you've trusted us with your future and this pivotal step towards that future, DDEEA has grown in scope and broadened its services to improve your experience and growth on this journey. But it doesn't end there. We welcome your feedback to improve the journey for those that may follow you. We thank you for trusting us and guiding us to better meeting your needs. Many of us, and I'm talking about our staff and administrators, were once just like all of you, first-generation college students with hopes and dreams. It's been our privilege to reach back and to teach back. It's been our honor to take you to new heights by offering a foundation and structure to help you climb. But we also want to remind you that this is your success. You earned your spot, you worked extremely hard, and you held on with determination and faith. We're proud of you, and we know you too will lift as you climb. So now, let's hear the reflections our graduates have to share. Each of our directors will introduce their graduate speaker. Let's listen. Hello, I'm Claudia Mosley, Director of the Center for Educational Opportunity, which is commonly referred to as CEO. On behalf of the CEO staff, I bring you greetings and share our excitement to celebrate our graduates. Today, we recognize our graduates who have each completed their own journey of self-discovery and academic success. They are truly trailblazers who will take what they have learned and transform our local communities, 
our state, our nation, and the world. I am honored to introduce you to one of our many successful CO scholars, Tina Marshalek. Tina has demonstrated great leadership, service, academic excellence, and humility on her journey to become an alumna of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Service and excellence is what she does. Now, she is not boastful and sometimes has a hard time sharing her accomplishments. But I am happy to report that in just a moment, she will give us a glimpse of her achievements. Before that, I want to highlight that Tina will graduate with distinction in the major of political science. And she has been deeply, and when I say deeply, I mean deeply engaged in efforts that benefit others throughout her entire college career. She is the definition of servant leader and scholarship. Please welcome our CEO graduation speaker, Tina Marshalek. Good evening, my name is Tina Marshalek. I am a CEO scholar graduating with a double major in community and nonprofit leadership and political science with a certificate in educational policy studies. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, but I've lived in Wisconsin for seven years and I call Madison home. I am also a transfer student from Madison College where I was student Senate president as well as the campaign manager for a student referendum. After transferring to UW Madison, I have held positions with the Mortgage Center for Public Service and the Office of Community Relations in our shared governance system and as the recruitment leader for the Wisconsin Women's Network Mentorship Program. I'm also the 2020 Truman Scholar from Wisconsin where I focused on homeschool advocacy and reform as someone who was homeschooled from kindergarten through 12th grade. After graduating, I'm spending this summer interning through the Truman Foundation Summer Institute with the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education. The last five years, I have called myself not only a first-generation low-income student, but also an FGLI student advocate. As a first-generation college student, I am the first in my immediate family to graduate from college, and as a low-income student, I did it while financially independent, working numerous jobs along the way. For FGLI students, not only are we graduating with our degrees, but we did it while beating odds and even during a global pandemic. I originally wanted this speech to be about recognizing our class's hard work and giving back to our communities. Those things are still true. Our success is largely a result of our perseverance and maybe an IV drip of coffee. I, for one, gained a reputation as a fervid workaholic, and when my friends admonished me for working nonstop, I liked to quote my favorite Parks and Recreation character, Leslie Nope. There's nothing we can't do if we work hard, never sleep, and shirk all other responsibilities in our lives. But I can't represent the first generation low income cohort and give a congratulatory message with the prevailing narrative that if we just stick our noses to the grindstone and persevere and be resilient and have tenacity, then that's all we need because it's not all we need. And that's why I've been a first generation low income student advocate because the situation is inequitable and that's why not as many of us make it to graduation as we should. Early in my collegiate career, there were many times I did not know I would make it to graduation. I can look back at my first student orientation where I thought to myself that I hoped I dropped out before I lost too much money. I wish I could say the only difference between that student orientation and today's graduation was that I kept my chin up and persevered, but the reality is that FGLI students often face considerable challenges in addition to their schoolwork, such as food and housing insecurity, inadequate healthcare access, or not being able to afford their textbooks. And what I know from student advocacy and from low-income student advocacy is that we can change that. What's important to know is that the world as it is can grow closer to the world as it should be. I know student advocacy and engagement can work because I've had the fortune to join dedicated teams of student leaders to effect long-term change so that those who come after us can have a more equitable experience and a more confident chance at making it to graduation. Groups like CO mattered to me because I found community among my fellow first-generation low-income students who had similar experiences to mine and from the advisors who supported me. My challenge to both myself and my fellow FGLI students is to remember not only what contributed to your success, but also what barriers limit the success of people like you, because we can carry that motivation into our careers and continue to advocate for our communities. I'm excited that on May 8th, 
We all go from being first generation college students to first generation college graduates. We are first and we're just getting started. Hello, my name is Sophia Snow. I am the director of the Office of Multicultural Arts Initiatives in the first wave hip hop and urban arts learning community here at UW-Madison. Um, to our first wave graduates, when I think of the 11th cohort of first wave, so many words come to mind, resilient, innovative, powerful, each of you came to Madison with so many hopes and dreams, so much creative energy, and against any odd, you all have pushed through to reach the finish line. I am so proud and honored to be in community with you. And just know, First Wave will always be here to provide any and all support as you enter this next phase of your life journey. First Wave is for lovers, as they say, a family that will always have your back. I have the distinct honor and privilege to introduce our student speaker, Aisha Kamara. Uh, when I first met Aisha, she was a prospective first wave recruit, 15 year old showstopper from South Minneapolis who exuded energy of curiosity, warmth, and what I can only describe as gentle fierceness. She contains multitudes. If you've ever met someone who was just happy to be in the room, that was young Aisha. Her presence as a recruit at Omai's annual Passing the Mic Festival literally sat with me for years. And when I found out she was finally admitted into First Wave, I was not surprised at all. I was elated and even comforted to know that First Wave was a better community for having her in it. When I returned a little over a year ago, Aisha, you were one of the first faces to greet me and I can't explain what a full circle moment it was. You had become the president of Uprise Poetry Collective. You were staff in the Gender and Sexuality Campus Center on their community building team. You were a graphic design intern for both the Multicultural Student Center and the Wisconsin Black Student Union. Ma'am, you were running the campus. And now I get to introduce you as the representative of First Wave's graduating class. I have no words for how proud I am of you. So without further ado, Aisha Kamara is a poet, visual and makeup artist hailing from South Minneapolis and a proud Aries. She is a fourth year student studying human development and family studies here at UW and in the 11th cohort of First Wave. Aisha's purpose across all her mediums is to see color, feel sound, and give a narrative that creates conversations suppled with empathy, driven with tenderness. Aisha will go on to enter Randolph College's MFA program in Virginia as a Nancy Craig Blackburn Fellow. Aisha, you deserve all of the good things this world has to offer. Please welcome to the screen, Aisha Kamara. Thank you so much, Sophia. This speech is recited over Ho-Chunk land. Two years ago, a fellow first wave homie stood and gave a speech that kindled me to my bones. Mackenzie Berry spoke her last line and I declared out loud, that's gonna be me when it's my time. Manifestation, if you will, or me being an Aries that gets what she wants. You decide. That said, my name is Aisha Kamara, and I'm in the 11th cohort of First Wave's hip hop and urban arts program, representing my God, my mama, and Southside Minneapolis. Let us begin in memory. When I first came to UW, I heard music. I was a sophomore in high school visiting the campus through First Wave's Passing the Mic Festival. And if you know me, you know I tend to lack a sense of direction. I get lost very easily and somehow I got separated from my group of peers. And here by Helen C. White, over the waters of Lake Mendota, I heard it. Music, acapella, voices held by a stadium of hands, I followed it and found a circle of folks holding down a cipher. It was there you could say, I started my slow bloom, my story spinning. To be a storyteller, you must be a good listener first. 
So as we entered campus as freshmen, we listened to our seniors and our bigs tell us about their years, the sights they saw, joy and burdens they carried. They left us with their homemade power. They grew from Madison soil and humanities classrooms. We gained their favorite study spots, places to go in groups only, who gave out free food on Wednesday nights. Printer jams and ink cartridges tested our collaboration skills. We owned corny Bucky shirts threaded together by remembrance. The kin I gained each year were a product of my own creation, an extension of myself. What I gave, I received a tenfold. Even in the frozen cold of Madison, my community rose and fell like sun, so no day was cool, too cold to bear. What we bond, where we bond in happiness, we also join in hardship. When they said college was going to be hard, quite frankly, that was an understatement. There were times grief held me like an ill-fitted suit. Burnout is a gentle phrasing when we felt like a city turned to ruins. There were times our campus became what attempted to burn the cities we made, snatched the joy gathered in our palms. We stood in a place that only knew how to take from us. Our campus demanded immediacy, yet listened to our stories with closed ears. And when they grew tired of our noise, they turned away. We became storytellers with no audience, stranded in a foreign land. So now it is my time to speak. I'm reclaiming my time. I could tell you I came here for the money. It would be an honest short story, but then you lose the story of the hustle. I can say this clearly. Ain't nobody work with what little we had better than we did. We spun dirt into sugar, caught the casted stones in our palms, but ain't thrown none back. We were kind. We were dripped down. We understood our assignment, okay? We remember the good songs and remix the bad. Our stories carry open mics and college library sessions till dawn. It's every birthday card I have saved since the ninth grade. It's been held, it's being held down by my 11th co, my first wave. In the margins of all of the assignments we turned in at 11.59 p.m., thank you very much, and every event that started late because, you know, color people time. Our stories even have the ability to hold those that are gone. Chris, Diana, you made it too. Rest easy. Every institution that has tried to drown out the sound of our music has failed. We are what we create. The tradition, the growth, the weary, the love, the bright light of an infinite possibility. If Madison is our home, it is because we built it. The seat at the table was made for us, by us, or whatever Solange said. In coming to UW-Madison, a degree was the only long-term goal I planned to accomplish, but fate had bigger plans for me. In addition to graduating in human development and family studies through the School of Human Ecology, I have opened for Angela Davis, Denise Smith. I have received Best Poet and Best Writing Team on the behalf of Uprise Poetry Collective. I have facilitated workshops with youth in Madison Public Schools. I had two gallery art shows. I met Lizzo. I painted a mural for the city of Madison. I've been accepted to Randolph College for a master's in creative writing. I got an NPR documentary on the way, and my mom is finally warming up to the way I dress. The story of my time in Madison is a stepping stone in the large body of water. It held the weight of me, at times wobbled and even threatened to sink from below me. Yet I stand here before all of you, a version of myself 15-year-old me would have stared in awe at. Stories, yours, mine and of those before us function as tools in building our understanding of the universe around us and the small but mighty worlds we create in them. Even as I wade against the sharp tide of the unknown, I still hear the music that led me here in the first place, which means I have not lost the ability to spin better stories. I am pushed forward by too many hands to stop now. Again, 
let there be praise to the stories we have yet to imagine for when they are bounded into books and ink by the memories of the people we have yet to love. Class of 2021, if college has casted us away at sea, this is a years long epic in the making. We are back on land, ready to scribe the story onto the bones of history. Blessed be that we are the first ones to tell it. Thank you. Good evening to the graduates, mentors, families, and friends. I am Samantha Samrath, Interim Director for the Marcel J. Lee Scholars Program with the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Education Achievement at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Congratulations, graduates. This is your special day, and I am so delighted to be a part of this special day to honor and to celebrate this milestone accomplishment. On this day, you step out of the comfort of the university community with newfound knowledge and skills from your courses, colleagues, faculty, and staff that have encouraged you to question, to wonder, to take pause, and to dig deeper to understand, learn, and think. On this day, you step out of the Marcel J. Lee Scholars Program having formed a community of scholars and friendships that have nursed you, experience that you have called to celebrate and lift up other identities and cultures, given to those in need in your university community and beyond. Develop your passions by stepping into leadership and also by following with conviction and grace all while living up to the program's philosophy of excellence in scholarship, leadership, and service. And today, as you step out into your next adventure, I know that your kindness, compassion, and bravery that I have witnessed from each of you will be embraced. Your kindness in your actions toward those you encountered along your journey and kindness towards yourself. The type of kindness that you have brought to the program that positively influenced the well-being of your fellow scholars and the program and allowed for endless opportunities to connect and to make memories together. Your compassion to reach out, to take risks and to share your thoughts and feelings with one another. I have witnessed your compassion during our individual appointments, fireside chats, class meetings, volunteer activities, and the many socials. Your compassion and spirits of service has shined through even during the pandemic year, where you all raised over $10,500 to give to the lo local community. Your bravery as you stand up for what you believe, bravery in the moment for those who cannot be brave, and bravery for yourself as you take on each day. I've, I have had the privilege of witnessing your bravery through the challenges of the pandemic. Then online classes, quarantine, lockdowns, and the mounting racial tensions in our community and across the world. Thank you for sharing with us your kindness, compassion, and bravery. We have a lot to learn from you. Again, congratulations to the class of 2021. Thinking of you always and remember, once a scholar, always a scholar on Wisconsin. Now I am pleased to introduce one of our graduating class speakers, Jeremy Pertello, a recipient of the Chancellor's Scholarship with the Marcel J. Lee Scholars Program. Jeremy is majoring in kinesiology he is currently interning at Pro Performance Health and Wellbeing in Louisville, Kentucky. He has served in numerous leadership roles during his undergraduate, including the Peer Learning Association, where he served as a peer facilitator for organic chemistry and physiology. For our program, he is currently serving as his class co-chair, where he coordinates and facilitates their monthly class meetings. In prior years, he has served on the CS planning committee, picnic planning committee, and co-emceed the event. 
He also served in various events as a panelist for the university over the years. In scholarship, Jeremy completed extensive undergraduate research exploring the neuromechanical implication on ACL, which he presented to the Wisconsin State Legislator at the UW at the University of Wisconsin Systems annual research in the Rotunda. After graduation, he will be attending the University of Michigan to pursue his master's of science in movement science and then pursue a PhD. Jeremy has been a textbook example of our program's philosophy of excellence in scholarship, leadership, and service. Please welcome Jeremy as he presents his graduation speech. Jeremy. Thank you so much, Sam. Greatly appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Portillo, and I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky, a city well known for the Kentucky Derby, college basketball, and particularly on important days like this, bourbon whiskey. I come from middle class parents. My father, an Apache Native American, grew up in poverty. He didn't have the opportunity to graduate high school. My mother had some college, but she chose to raise she chose to raise my brothers and I as her top priority. So. Before I go any further, I want to thank my family. It's because of their sacrifices that I have the opportunity to be here today. I remember it like it was yesterday, the night I received the Chancellor's Scholarship. My mom and I had thought it was a telemarketer, so we disregarded the call. But as my dog howled at the high-pitched answering machine, we made out three words. Chancellors, Scholars, Wisconsin. I dashed to grab the phone, but the call had already been sent to voicemail. So a thousand questions swirled around my head as I took down the number the caller had left. Had I missed my chance? Was this a joke? Did I hear him correctly? Around 9 p.m., another call came through from Dominic Ledesma, informing me that I had indeed received the Chancellor's Scholarship. During my time here at UW, I've gained much more than I ever thought a college experience could offer. I've slept in the library, walked down State Street for coffee at 3 o'clock in the morning, and been carried home drunk from a few parties. I've also watched a game-winning field goal and over time from the student section of Camp Randall, not to mention the amazing friendships and opportunities I've developed along the way. During my time here at UW, I also landed a position at the Badger Athletic Performance Laboratory, working under Dr. Daniel Cobian and a team of remarkable researchers. We are currently investigating neuromechanical implications of anterior cruciate ligament ruptures in Division I athletes. Through this position, I've written grants, presented research at the state capitol, and dramatically enhanced my knowledge of orthopedic sports medicine. And because of the mentorship I've received in this position, starting this fall, I will be attending the University of Michigan to obtain my master's in movement science and research at the Exercise and Sports Science Initiative. My research focuses will include wearable technology, sport neuromechanics, and human bioenergetics. Through all my experiences at UW, the Merciel J. Lee Scholars Program has provided support, care, and compassion. More importantly, they have always maintained an expectation of excellence. So if there's one thing I would like to leave my fellow scholars with, it's one quote from one of my favorite movies, Goodwill Hunting. You're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. Don't be too scared to cash it in. Meaning, take advantage of the opportunities that you have and never fear the challenge. Trust me when I tell you that people would kill for the opportunities and talents that each of you has. But remember, this incredible staff that works so hard to make this opportunity available to you owes you nothing. The DDEA, owes you nothing and your professors and family owe you nothing but you owe them and yourself everything having this opportunity does not make you special what you do with it and the positive impact that you make with it does and to my fellow graduates let me remind you that you deserve to be here and more importantly you deserve to soak up every moment of rejoicing and celebration this is your moment always remember that life is not simply about what you go through. It's how you go through it. So challenge yourself to constantly find the good in things. Remind yourself that perfection is the accomplice of foolishness. You are who you are. And today, each of us is a member of the 2021 graduating class of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. In closing, I wanna thank my Marcel J. Lee staff and the DDEA for allowing me to speak this afternoon. As a first generation student, I'm just grateful to be here. Words cannot express the appreciation I have for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a bottle of bourbon to tend to on Wisconsin. Thank you, Jeremy, for your kind words. 
Next, I would like to introduce Maddie Brolin, a recipient of the Power Snap Scholarship with the Marcel J. Lee Scholars Program. Maddie is majoring in biochemistry. She is currently serving as the peer group leader for biochemistry class. Her leadership also evolved in service areas where she served as the volunteer co-chair for two years for her PK class. In scholarship, her passion was in undergraduate research and working in the science lab, serving as a lab assistant with Covance and as a researcher for Chi Lab Group at the Carbone Cancer Center at the Wisconsin Institute for Medical Research for three years. Maddie is a published author in nano research. After graduation, Matt, Maddie plans to complete her master's in public health at UD Madison and then pursue both an MD and PhD. Maddie's resilience is impeccable. She serves as an example of a program's philosophy of excellence in scholarship, leadership, and service. Please welcome Maddie as she presents her graduation speech. Maddie. Thank you so much, Sam. Hello, everyone. My name is Maddie Bolin, and I'm a PowerSnap Scholar graduating with a BS degree in biochemistry. I am so incredibly honored to have been chosen to represent my class in the Merciel J. Lee program today. During my time at UW-Madison, I've had the privilege of serving as a Bible study leader with the Navigators, led group rides and race bikes with the UW cycling team, and served as a class leader coordinating volunteer events for my fellow PK scholars. As a peer group leader, I've enjoyed helping my fellow classmates with topics in Biochemistry 551. As part of the math team, I worked alongside classmates, mentors, and professors to solve mathematical anomalies. As a member of the Chi Lab and Record Lab, I've applied my love for mathematical models and theories to uncover mysteries in kidney disease, cancer, and transcription. And after graduation, I plan to continue my research with the Record Lab, gain my master's from UW-Madison in public health, and then go on to pursue my MD and PhD. Despite my many successes, my time at UW-Madison hasn't always been rosy. What many of my classmates didn't know is that following a series of traumatic events, I found myself struggling with motivation, purpose, and the will to go on. During the worst of it, I completely dissociated from myself, no longer knowing who I was or what mattered anymore. I was lost. As a child, my mom was my whole world. Whenever something was challenging for me, I would think back to the stories she told me about her childhood and growing up rough in Kenya. These stories inspired me. These stories also made me feel like it was my purpose to elevate my family, to give them the gift of financial freedom, and through doing that, give them the freedom to do and become so much more. For me, this meant I had to become a doctor, but I never stopped to consider what my own desires and goals were. Coming out as gay to my family, as well as discussing my shortcomings in school at the time, spurred my journey of self-discovery. All of a sudden, the purpose I had hung my life on was yanked out from under me. At that point, I had to make a decision. Do I continue to fit myself into the mold of my previous purpose, or do I chart a new path for myself? As scary, as difficult, and as sad as it was, I couldn't stay stagnant any longer. I had to move forward. My shortcomings and orientation don't change who I am. I'm still Maddie. I'm still the special person I believe myself to be. With the help of a new support network of friends and colleagues, as well as a lot of self-work, I was able to accept all of who I am, not despite my shortcomings, but because of them. To my fellow graduates, you might not have experienced my specific struggles, but during our time at UW-Madison, we've all had our fair share of challenges, moments where we felt inadequate, perhaps even falling short of expectations placed on us. The point is, don't stop trying in an attempt to avoid falling short. Try while accepting that you will fall short. We all make mistakes. That doesn't make us any less human. It makes us the incredible people that we are. I want to celebrate and congratulate every single one of you today. Graduating from the Marcel J. Lee Scholars Program and UW-Madison is a testament to your tenacity to overcome challenges, your well-rounded character, and your selfless devotion to others. By being yourselves, you have all inspired me to fight to be myself. You are amazing, an exceptionally intelligent group of scholars. You have so much ahead of you, and I am confident that each of you will go on to change the world. I want to sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank Sam Samrath, Katrina Sparkman, Jacqueline Fisher, Gloria Hawkins, Joanne Pritchett, and the founders and supporters of the Merciel J. Lee program. 
Sam and Katrina especially, you both are like family to me. The patience, kindness, and support you both have shown me have encouraged and uplifted me and allowed me to consider new ways to look at life and improve myself as a person. I feel emboldened to close this chapter of my life and make the next chapter the best yet. On Scholars and on Wisconsin. Good evening. My name is Emily Hofecker, and I serve as the director of the UW-Madison Posse Program. First and foremost, congratulations, Posse Class of 2021. I could not be more proud of each and every one of you. To say this journey has been anything short of tumultuous would be an understatement. You've been one of the most resilient, driven, change-making, and thoughtful group of scholars I've worked with in my 11 years with Posse. You all exude the ideals of passion, purpose, and vulnerability. You've utilized your voices, leadership, and curious minds to bring positivity, action, and accountability to our campus and community. Each of you has a gift that the world desperately needs. Each of you dare to dream and push boundaries, always thinking of ways to make this world a better place. As you take your next steps in the future, please, please, please remember you are human. Be kind to yourself as you navigate the next chapter of your life. Please be present in the days to come as they only come once and always proceed with intention as many doors will open for each of you. Additionally, please know Posse will be here to applaud your successes, encourage your abilities during setbacks, and always remind you of your extraordinary purpose and invaluable place in this world. And in true Posse fashion, I encourage you to stay authentic, share your story, and celebrate you and all of your accomplishments. You are truly remarkable human beings. I am honored to introduce our 2021 Posse graduation speaker, Shiroz Charania, a Chicago 16 Posse scholar. Shiroz is a leader and scholar in all that she does, and it's been my pleasure to get to know her over the last four years. Her academic achievements, campus and community involvement, mentoring and volunteering are the epitome of what a Posse graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison is. She is a health promotion and health equity major with certificates in global health and public policy. She's conducted research at UW, interned, ran student orgs, tutored, has been a house fellow, and still made time to make a difference at UW-Madison and in our posse community. She's one of the most driven, charismatic, and hardworking young women I've ever had the delight to work with. And all of us know her smile and laugh <laughs> lights up any room. I am so proud of her and ecstatic to see the change that she makes in the world of public health as she moves along on her academic and life journey. Once again, congratulations, Posse Class of 2021, Posse Love Forever, and on Wisconsin. Greetings, Class of 2021. First, thank you to Emily for that kind introduction. I am so thankful for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Posse graduates. My name is Shiroz and I am the daughter of immigrants, a first generation college student and a proud Posse scholar from Chicago. While my parents never went to college, they still pushed me to gain education. They wanted me to break the status quo. My story has been interconnected with hundreds of stories by other Posse scholars who share these intersectional identities as first generation college students and as students of color. Today, I have the privilege to shed light on these stories that tell the unique journey of a Posse scholar at UW. UW Posse has allowed scholars from four distinct cities, from LA, New York, Chicago, and DC to thrive as trailblazers of change and as underrepresented voices wanting to make an impact on the world. While we bonded over our similarities through our experiences as scholars, we equally embraced and encouraged our differences as complex human beings. We explored these complexities through our yearly Posse Plus retreats where we applied the challenging the idea, not the person into action. It was through the endless study sessions at the Red Gym where we built a home away from home together. This year, we were tasked with fighting a pandemic that left us physically distant from the community we built together. 
but it was through these times of adversity we became the strongest. We sent messages wishing each other good health, planned Zoom gatherings, and found solace in the virtual posse office. It is times like this where we are reminded why UW Posse exists in the first place. I remember vividly sitting in Emily's office, our posse director, where she helped me fight feelings of imposter syndrome. Instances with Danny, my mentor, who encouraged me to speak up in class. And shout out to CP16, my own posse, where we celebrated our successes and picked each other up in our failures. As a posse scholar, I was provoked to think beyond my comfort zone and encouraged to embrace the value and validity of my voice. Through this support, I was able to intern at the Wisconsin Alliance for Women's Health, be civically engaged at the Literacy Network, and serve as UW's 2020 Newman Civic Fellow. With that, I am happy and humbled to announce that this upcoming fall, I will be pursuing my Master of Public Health at the University of Minnesota with a hefty scholarship. UW Posse has allowed this to happen, and for that, I am forever grateful. We are more than just the class of 2021. We are part of a journey of 20 years that has connected our countless stories of successes and legacies. Our degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison is an embodiment of our resiliency. It is through this universal language where we recognize it is okay not to be okay that the path to get here was turbulent and messy and that the intersections of yesterday and today have given us the hope to live in a new world tomorrow. And the right to hope is the most powerful motivator I know. It is the hope that as storytellers, it will be our narratives that will serve as a bridge and as a beacon of hope for the next generation. That hope is what my parents saw in me. Our stories have fostered passions and conquered instability. Our stories are celebrated today because we have proved time after time that being a Posse scholar is not just showing up for our academics, but for each other. This Posse love is forever and unconditional. So while we have learned that our living times are not constant, our leadership will forever persevere time after time because we are graduates from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So congratulations to you, Posse Class of 2021. Thank you and Posse Love Forever on Wisconsin. Hello friends, my name is Gail Ford. I am the director of the Pre-College Enrichment Opportunity Program for Learning Excellence, affectionately known as PEOPLE. Congratulations to the 70 plus graduating PEOPLE Scholars on completing your undergraduate degrees. To say that we are proud is an understatement. You accomplished this goal during unprecedented circumstances. Your perseverance and tenacity brought you to this moment. No one achieves without the support of community. So we also congratulate the many communities that lifted you and supported your success. Here's my advice as you move to the next level. Take risks, challenge norms that do not serve the greater good and build spaces that uplift humanity to expand, not shrink. Congratulations scholars, y'all lit. Now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing your 2021 People graduate speaker. Her first semester of undergrad, she was on academic probation, but from there, she spent seven semesters on the Dean's list. She's earning a Bachelor of Science in Health Promotion, Health Equity, and a minor in Promoting Activities for Diverse Abilities. A finalist in the UCLA Public Health Scholars Training Program a McNair scholar who is leading qualitative research study in which she seeks to understand the lived experiences of black students in predominantly white institutions to inform the development of culturally responsive wellness programs. The Wisconsin State Facilitator of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated 
by way of the Zeta Xi core chapter, a collegiate advocate for the kinesiology diversity, climate and inclusion work group. This girl is on fire. She hails from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and her story is my story. Please welcome Ms. Stephanie R. Woodson. Thank you so much, Director, for, for that introduction. The PUPA program was created for students like me, for students who come from a place that was deemed the worst city to raise a Black child, for students who are disadvantaged because the school district is under-resourced, for students with adverse childhood experiences, for students whose biological mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother transition before we can even receive our degree. For students who legit don't know who their father is. For students who have incarcerated brothers. For students who are a part of the foster care system. For students like me. People, I thank you for bringing me here every summer because it was probably the safest place I could have been. It was the first time I was able to put my guard down and not be on survival mode. I didn't have to worry about our electricity being cut off. I didn't have to worry about all of my belongings being packed up and sent to another family member's house, eviction, homelessness. When the people program ended, I did have to worry about where my home was going to be. So when I count my blessings, I count this program twice. When I get invited back to MPS schools to speak to younger students, I overly emphasize how important this program is this program that gives students like me a fighting chance. I make sure my baby sister logs on to her people after school program every Monday and Friday, because I know for sure that this is something she cannot miss out on. By the way, I think I need to get a brand ambassador check or something the way I talk about people program. I had some trying times at UW. When I first got here, I experienced culture shock. I got bad grades for the first time in my life. I had to learn how to study. I had to make new friends. And, their spot, and despite their own, there only being two black people on my floor in celery, my roommate Destiny and I, shout out to Destiny. Child, I went home every weekend to Milwaukee, but that didn't work out in my favor either. I ended my first year on academic probation. I was lost and school wasn't working out, but going back to Milwaukee didn't feel like an option either. Oh, and let's not forget the allostatic stress load that uniquely affects Black students at PWIs. I can go on and on about that, but I only have five minutes, so y'all will have to come to my McNair speech for that one. But after the years went on, I figured out what worked. I knew that I had to change majors because chemistry was trying to take me out. I learned that living off, off campus was cheaper. I knew that paying parking tickets was less than paying for parking. And if you know, you know. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I am the illegal parking, parking ticket getting, first name basis with the tow lot queen. But that's beside the point. But now, you can't tell me nothing. I am graduating with seven consecutive Dean's List honors, not including this semester. Oh, and let's not, let's not forget that I was accepted into the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health and turned it down. My grad school acceptances were reminders that I'm really like that. When I got that specific acceptance letter, I cried like a baby. I cried because I secretly doubted myself. I cried because I worked so hard to get where I am. I cried because my mom is not here to brag about it on Facebook. I cried because the little black girl from Morris Marshall High School has the capability to take over this world. You can't really know where you're going until you know where you have been. People program, I thank you for existing for students like me, for being the support I needed when the assistance around me has failed me. Graduates, I challenge you to really hone in on those experiences that you thought were going to break you because it is what we learn from those that we will use to fuel our fire. Congratulations, fellow scholars. It's a degree for me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Audra Hernandez, and I am the director of the UW-Madison 
Ronald E. McNair Post-Baccalaureate Achievement Program, better known as the McNair Scholars Program. The McNair Scholars Program is a federal TRIO program funded by the U.S. Department of Education. We prepare low-income, first-generation, and underrepresented undergraduates for doctoral study. This academic year, our scholars face challenges like never before. From limitations caused by COVID-19 to exhaustion from racial and social tensions. Even with these challenges, all McNair scholars move forward with their academics, research projects, and graduate preparation. They moved forward and took advantage of every opportunity that our program offers. Because as Dr. Ronald E. McNair said, whether or not you reach your goals in life depends entirely on how well you prepare for them and how badly you want them. I want to congratulate all of our graduating scholars as they move forward with their plans to earn a graduate degree. As you begin your graduate studies, please remember that the path to the PhD is not easy or straightforward. Remember to set boundaries and positive affirmations for yourself. Remember to conduct your research with integrity and patience. And always remember to call on your McNair community for support. I am now happy to introduce our commencement speaker for this year, McNair scholar, Aaron Kennard. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez for the introduction. As Dr. Hernandez stated, my name is Aaron Kennard and I am a McNair scholar from Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, graduating with a bachelor's in education studies and history. As a McNair scholar, I've had the privilege of researching race and whiteness in rural schools and communities. And in the fall, I'll be pursuing a PhD in sociology at the University of Virginia, where I aspire to continue this research. This past year has been a challenge for everyone. Within a matter of what felt like days, the world had flipped upside down. The COVID-19 pandemic left millions of people in the US without jobs, homes, food, a sense of security, and most importantly, millions of people lost their loved ones. In the summer of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic converged with another public health crisis that America has been dealing with for centuries, racism. This past year, we said the names of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and in recent weeks, we have sadly said the names of Micaiah Bryant, Adam Toledo, and Dante Wright, each senselessly murdered due to systemic racism. In the summer of 2020 and now, we take to the streets full of sadness, grief, anger, but also united around a demand for action, just as many of our family members did 60 years ago. I spent weeks trying to process these events, and I spent countless hours trying to express my thoughts and feelings without them feeling empty and curated. But the reality is that I felt exhausted. Exhausted not only from the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, but from the centuries of systemic injustices that Black people and people of color have continued to endure. It broke my heart to know that my little siblings would continue to see a video of a black man crying to breathe in the state over. And it hurt to know that they would see a world that would allow this to happen. The pain of knowing that these injustices are many of the same injustices that my grandparents and ancestors dealt with decades prior sat heavily on my chest. However, while many of the injustices are the same and the moment sounds and feels familiar, we must demand more. Overcoming this exhaustion defeat was the biggest challenge that I and many other students of color continued to face during our undergraduate career. While it took time, I recognized that the same things that made me feel defeated were the same things that could give me hope. I refused to stand by and allow for my siblings and other young children of color to continue to live in a country that devalues and dehumanizes them. And then I see hope. And while it hurts to acknowledge that this has been a fight that started decades ago, it is because of those who came before us that we must continue to fight. While many believe the promises of equity for all within America feels like a fantasy, I simply cannot let go of the possibility of achieving more. The type of change needed to fulfill the promises of our nation is sweeping and transformative and will require what U.S. Representative John Lewis referred to as good trouble. As a McNair scholar, I have had the privilege of growing amongst a like-minded community of underrepresented scholars who I am confident will use this opportunity of attending graduate school to create change and make significant contributions within their respective field of study. 
I hope that as my fellow McNair scholars and I move forward in our academic careers, we remember the community that we were able to build and facilitate together. In moments of struggle, may we recognize the hard work and barriers we overcame to make it where we are now headed, off the masters, masters in public health, and PhD programs. As I move forward in my graduate studies and beyond, I aspire for my research and actions to be the good trouble that works us towards creating real sustainable change and that we create opportunities for underrepresented communities the same way the McNair Scholars Program has. I know that many of my fellow Badgers will continue to use their voice and power to create the America that can be. I want to conclude with a quote from President Barack Obama. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. I want to thank the U.S. Department of Education for continuing to fund the TRIO programs, including the McNair Scholars Program. I also want to thank the McNair staff, my fellow scholars, research mentors, family and friends for their support throughout my undergraduate career. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2021. Congratulations to the class of 2021. We are so very proud of you. Nothing and no one can take away this moment or this accomplishment. You have earned your degree. We know it's been a journey. But now that you know what it is, don't ever settle. Not only am I, but all the DDEA advisors and staff, along with your mentors and advocates, are sending you a virtual hug and celebrating with your families. You are the educational achievement in our division's name. And while we know you're fully grown adults in this collective cultural sense, you are our latest class of DDEA babies. We have known many of you since you were young teenagers and others since you first stepped on campus. We have been honored to nurture and support you as budding badgers. And now, because it's what we do as your campus family, we wanna love on you as full badgers and our newest badger alumni. I also want to salute and praise you as your class is the quintessential expression of resilience. You are here in the midst of a pivotal social movement where we need to take a breath, reset, and decide who we are, where you are going, and how we are getting there as a people. What I know for sure is you are not marginalized you are front and center in every form of human intersectionality, and that's exactly where you should be, leading this pivotal evolution. 2021 graduates, you've been exposed to exponential change in technology and society over your lifetimes, not to mention unprecedented global challenges and pending challenges. And through all of this, you have been amazing. Not only have you pushed through to your academic goals, but you've been fully engaged in the world as it is. You've been growing as individuals and looking ahead to where your skills and convictions will best contribute to this world. And you are graduating into a world that desperately needs you. So don't let anyone tell you there just isn't room or no one knows what the future holds and they're not sure of economic stability. All that has changed. Press on and demand that society be better and the world grow forward together. You have a chance to revise this society and how it works, who it serves, how it impacts your community. As we approach a post-pandemic economy, the nation needs smart, innovative people like you to replace and reconfigure systems of service, education, entrepreneurship, and social justice. More than ever before, our shortcomings and our failures as a country are laid bare. Instead of figuring out how to fit in, you can fashion what's needed and wanted. It hasn't gone without notice that you've consciously paired academic certificates with degree majors to make your college years and experience count. I see you, we see you, and are proud. Make your own job. Use your intuition and your imagination to fill critical gaps. To quote Michelle Obama, 
Don't be afraid. Be focused. Be determined. Be hopeful. Be empowered. So we celebrate your accomplishments as you get ready to step into the next chapter of your lives. The UW Madison tradition continues with the class of 2021 as you leave your unique legacy at this university and taking a special place in the Wisconsin Badger Nation. Although we can't recognize you in person, we recognize each one of you in our hearts. So graduates, it's about that time. University of Wisconsin-Madison class of 2021, grab your virtual tassels on the right and move them to the left. You ra ra with Scon Sin. Thank you.